嗯，屏幕吗？这就可以了，是吧？慢，直接看 PPT 好像更好一些。我还买个电脑慢。可以了吧 ？OK, everyone, let us start our class. Can you hear me? Okay, from today we will learning the parasitology subject. So in uh, our department, that is for a pathogenic biology. We are having the two classes. One is medical microbiology, the other one is human parasitology. And the medical microbiology, you already finished it in the last term, yes? So in this semester, we are learning for the human parasitology. This is one part of the pathogen, one part of the pathogen. So in this class, what we should we learn? We just mainly learning for the parasite. That parasiting in the human and can causing the disease. That is for a human parasitology. So first of all, what is the parasite? Yeah. The parasite that is an animal means they are the live uh, live one. Yes, they are live animals. And they are live in or upon another organism that draws its nutrient directly from it and cause the disease. This is the parasite. So one lives in or upon the other bio uh, organism and they cause harm to the other one. These bad guys, we call them as the parasite. So parasite, they are having the three big parts. So like this one. Can you see this one? Maybe this is so bright. This is one only there. They are having the one nucleus. Means they are a unicellular organism. Unicellular organism. So for this one, we call them as the protozoars. Protozoars. And like this one and this one, they are a multicellular organism. So, but for the middle center one, it is a very long one, and they are having a muscular structure. Using these muscles, they can migrate and they can move it. So, for these types of uh, parasites, we call them as the termites. We call them as the hermes. And some of them, like this one. 
What's this? Mosquito. Yeah, this one is the mosquito. And maybe for a flies, pigs, they are also having the multicellular organism. But maybe they can parasitizing on our surface, or maybe they can sucking the blood, can transmit the disease. So for these types of parasites, we call them as the arthropods. If they are transmit the disease, then we can call them as the medical arthropods. Medical arthropods. So in our parasite subject. They are having these three big parts. One is protozoa. The second one is for Hermes. And the last one that is for the arthropods. That is for the arthropods. So this is for the parasite. So why, uh, what is the medical parasite color? They added orange. Means that is for a one subject. That is for one subject. So in this subject, what they are learning what they are studying first of all as a medical student you should recognize this is the worm or not this is a parasite or not in another word you should learn you should recognize this is the pathogen or not so you should know their morphology you should know their morphology and what about their lifespan what about for their you should know during their life cycle, they are having the adult ones or eggs or larvae and in which animals they are parasitizing. They need which type of environment. That is for the life cycle. That is for the life cycle. So in our subject, the first one that is for the morphology. The second one, you should know their life cycle. And during their life cycle, which stage can infect humans? And which stage they can cause the disease? That is for a pathogenicity. That is for a pathogenicity. And the patient now, he was got an infection. He was sick. You should make a diagnosis, yes? And take treatment. And if we want to prevent this disease uh, transmission, what we have to do? That is for the epidemiology and for the prevention. So, in the medical parasitology, we are just mainly learning for this one. The morphology of the parasite, the life cycles, and the, the relationship with the host and the environment. And the last one, how we can control, how we can prevent the parasitic disease. That is the medical parasitology. Medical parasitology. So how, why we should know it for the human parasitology? So I think most of you already learned or heard about some parasite, yes? Which parasite you heard about it? Which type of parasite? Ascaris and Ascaris lambricoid. They are common name that is for a round worm, yes? Yes, pinworm, worm, yes? They are a worm, yes? And like the arthropods in the, like the mosquitoes. Malaria? Malaria? Yeah. Pig, mice. Malaria, did you cover it? Malaria. The pathogen that is for the plasmodium. Plasmodium. They are the parasites. So first of all, let us look at some Review of the parasite in our subject. Maybe we can learn it for this one. They are just some a little amount, num, uh, uh, just some little part of the parasite. I will show you for this one and to see why we should be learning for a parasite. The first one that is what you mentioned it, that is for a round of Ascarius lambricoid. This is for Ascarius lambricoid. This is the adult worm of Ascarius lambricoid. But of course, that is for a not the that, uh, exact picture. This is for the pattern picture, yes. But from this one, we can know that. From this one, we can know that that is for a, a little bit thread, long worm. And it looks a little bit fat, yes. 
it looks a little bit fat in his mouth. Yeah, oh. <laughs> in his mouth, we can see that. But this one, yes. So they need to eat a lot of the things, yes. And in their mouth, we can see that some finger like morphology. That is their lips. And they are having the three lips. So using this, they will sucking the nutrient and force the eat to human. And in which part they are parasitizing? They are living in our which organ? Small intestine. They are living in our small intestine. So for this patient, we can see that from his anus, he drive out a lot of worms, yes? A lot of adult round worms. A lot of round worms. And you said they are living in our small intestine. So the small intestine that looks like a little bit tubular structures, yes? And they are also be a, a long, a long worm. So if like this huge amount of the worm, they are parasitic in our small intestine, they may cause obstruction of our small intestine. Yes? So this one is for the intestinal obstruction. So the patient, if infected by the round worm, he will be so skinny. Yes? Maybe some of the people, they want to make a turn as a skinny. So they are eating the round worm. But can we do it or not? Can we eat the round worm and make a skinny or not? <laughs> We will talk about for this topic for the next week. Next week, we are mainly learning about for a round wall. So this is the first one, the round wall. The second wall, hook wall. The hook wall. Hook. Yes, they are just like the pipe. Yes, so they are parasitic in our small intestine too. But the round worm, the adult worm, it can grow in up to 20 to 30 centimeters. But the hook worm, the adult worm, it is only for one centimeter. One centimeter. So these two worms, they are the adult hook worm. Adult hook worm. Now they are parasitic in our small intestine. Yes? But Look at for the next picture. Which part of our body? Foot, yes? They are living in small intestine. Why I have to show you the foot? They are infecting from our skin. Maybe for the foot, maybe from our hand. If we are touch these larvae stage, then they are penetrate our skin and migrating in our body. Migrating in our body. So this is for initial infection. Initial infection. So you can find the edema that happened in the infective side. Infective side. Now they are the adult one is living in our small intestine. The infective is started from our skin. Then how they can arriving in our skin? From the skin, how they can arrive our small intestine? Yes, they are migrating. How they are migrating? They have to go our blood circulation. And through the lung, and we should swallow the larvae. At last, they are arriving in our small intestine. And the disease, what they are causing? Look at for the diagnosis, diagnosis. So this one was we can see that is examine his eyes. Yes, this examination is for look if he is having the anemia or not, anemia or not. And this one is the same. This is also look uh, look uh, to see if 
the patient was having the anemia or not. So means the who poor, though they are living in our small intestine, and they can cause anemia to the patient. So the anemia, how they were caused? Because of the adult worm, they are sucking blood. They are sucking in blood. They are sucking blood in our small intestine. So at last, the patient will be having the anemia. That is the second one, hookworm. The third one, that is filaria lymphatic filariasis. So in these pictures, what is a little bit different? Yeah, this one. His leg, yes? This is it. Now, this is the health one, yes? And for this man, we can see that one leg is thin. The other one is a little bit strong, yes? This is a hair pathogen. This, uh, the, the, this leg was have some disease. This is for the elephant type. Yes. And for this, oh, wow. Well. <laughs> this way. Both of his legs was, yeah, that is for also belonging to elephantitis. So elephantitis, that means the skin, the leg, the limb, it will be stronger. And the skin, it turned as the grass. Grass, that is for the elephantitis. So why they are having this disease? The worm was parasitic and why the patient were having the elephantitis? The adult worm was parasitic in the lymph node. Parasitic in the lymph node. So they were blocking the lymphoid circulation. So in which the part of the lymph node they are blocked, then the latter part of the limbs it will be enlarged. So maybe in the man, the test it will be having the elephant head. But in the women, maybe their breast also can Block. That is for the filaria, lymphatic filaria. The next one, cytosomiasis. The two child, yes, yeah? the two children. We can look at for their abdominal part, yes. Yeah? Now for this one. Oh. So what is this one? This line means. This line means our limbs, our limbs. You can touch the limbs, yes? Yeah? So they draw it. This is, his, this is his limb. This is his limb layer. So this was abdominal, this is abdominal. And what this will be? This line. This line will meaning in the right part, which organ you have it? Liver, yes. In the healthy one, the liver, the egg, maybe we can touch a little bit, but here we can see that the liver, we can touch big part, yes. Yeah? So means their liver was enlarged. The liver was enlarged. And for this part, we can see that in his abdominal part, there are another line. So this line will meaning for which organ? Spleen, yes. Spleen, it is also untouchable. But all of his abdominals, we can touch the spleen. So means the spleen is also enlarged. That is for the cystosomiasis. The cystosome, the adult one is living in our blood circulation, the mesenteric vein, the mesenteric vein. And they are lying the eggs directly in our mesenteric vein. So when the blood circulation, they will arriving in our liver and can causing the liver ascites. So they can causing the enlargement of the livers or maybe enlargement of spleen and maybe having the other types of disease. So this disease, this treatment will be chronic reaction, chronic infection. So from the initial infection to having this treatment, they need for several years. They need for several years. So if the cystosome, they are parasitic in our upper mesenteric vein, then they are having these types of clinical symptoms. But 
if they are parasitic in our lower mesentery vein, then the blood circulation and the bladder, they will be connected. So whether they are urine, the blood will be carried out. So you can see that that is for a blood urine. That is for a blood urine. So all of them, that is for a cytosomiasis. But the pathogen, the type is a little bit, the species is a little bit different because the parasitic in place is different. That is for a cytosomiasis. Yeah. The next one, tinea sodium. The common name, we call them as pork people. Pork people. So the tinea sodium, the adult one can parasite in the human. And also the larvae can parasite in the human. But the larvae cause disease. We call them as the cystis psychosis. So this is one piece of pearl. One piece of pearl. What you can see? What is abdominal? There are a lot of white dot, yes? That is the larvae of tinea cellule. That is for a CT circle. If you ingest these type, uh, uh, these pork, of course, that is for a road or undercooked, not for a well done, yes? Road or undercooked. Then the larvae will arriving on our small intestine, they may cause the disease. The disease, we call them as a acid. We call them as the acid. So the acid, that is the adult tinea sodium or tinea stagnator. If they are parasitic, we both call them as acid. These types of tapeworms, they can grow up several meters in our small intestine, several meters. But the clinical symptoms is so mild, maybe for asymptomatic. But the larvae stage of these parasites, they can cause the disease to the human, and that will be the severe. So in this talk, we can see that they are having the larvae. And also, the larvae can parasite in our muscles, in our muscles, or maybe in our subcutaneous, subcutaneous. So for this man, he's showing his heart, body, yes? But what is the, uh, what is the uh, have problem? Like this one, this one. You can see some nodules, yes? You can see some nodules under the skin. That is for a subcutaneous skin circle. But the larvae is not only can parasite in our subcutaneous part or in our muscles. Also, they can go into any part of our body. So the most dangerous one, that is they are parasite in our brain. If they are parasite in our brain, then we call them as the neurocystic circle. So this man. We can see that they are having a one, two, three, six circles for the parasite in his brain, yes? So uh, depending on which part of brain they are parasitic, the patient will having a different clinical symptoms, yes? That is for a neurocystic circle. And also they can go into the eyes or heart for any part. So like this man. In his eyes. Did you find the larvae? Did you find the worm? They, they are the same one, but this one is only parasite in your eyes. So you can see some worm was still moving in your eyes. That is for the CT circosis. That is for the CT circosis. The next one, spirometra manthony. And the larvae stage can cause disease to the human. The disease name, we call them as pregnosis. The disease name was called them as pregnosis. This is also belonging to one part of a tapeworm. But the larvae, that is only for several centimeters. Several centimeters. 
And we can see that these two patients, both of their eyes was having the edema, reddish, yes? So if we make an examination to see what happened in their eye, then you can find there are a whitish worms parasited in their eye. Whitish worms was parasited in their eye. So it looks terrible, yes? But just using the first step to remove these worms, then the edema it will be disappeared. And uh, he will turn as TRT1. That is for the spagnosis. But this worm also can parasite in their brain, so in their, uh, or maybe for in our other body. So like this patient in their leg, oh, in their leg, they move out one larvae, yes? They measured it nearly 20 centimeters. And for this one, from their brain, they made the operation also find the work that is for the spagnosis okay have a break then we will go in for the next slide <laughs>
Okay, go on for our class. So the next worm that is for the echinococcus granulosis. So for this type of disease, that is the larvae stage was parasitizing in our organs, mainly in our livers or maybe for the lungs or the brain. But the adult worms, they are parasitizing in the dog, the canyon. So this one was the patient. Then we can see that. Because the larvae was parasitic in our liver, so his abdominal is enlarged, short, so short, yes. So they did the operation. They found they are having the cyst. They are having the cyst. And also this cyst can be growing in our brain and also can parasite in our other part. But like this patient, unfortunately, the cyst was parasitic in his eye, yes, in his eye. So in this way, they have to remove his eye. They have to remove his eye. That is for a cystic echinococcus, cystic echinococcosis. Malaria, it's a, it is a famous disease, yes, in the tropic areas and in the worldwide. The malaria, that is, we can see that that is the most severe or most, uh, most having, the, having the high mortality rate of the disease, parasitic disease. The pathogen is named as for the plasmodium. So the plasmodium, they mainly parasitic in our RBC cells. They are parasitic in our RBC cells. They were multiplicating, they are developing. And at last, they are destroy the RBC cells. So the patient can having the anemia, also can having the fevers or like this way. So the the the, the this scientist, the the laboratory, he first found out that in the RBC cells, the malaria patient, they are having the pathogen. So he having the Nobel Prize. But the rose, the rose, he also found that this disease was transmitted by the mosquitoes. Transmitted by the mosquitoes. So he also having the Nobel Prize. And the last one, that is the two yo yo. And he uh, found out uh, uh, some of the chemicals from the plant. And this is very effective for the malaria treatment. So she have a Nobel Prize. So what is their main mechanism and how they are having the disease and how we can make a treatment? We were learning in the plasmodium class. The last example, that is uh, bismania. Also having the enlarged liver or enlarged spleen, yes? And the patient were having the fevers and having the pigment. So we call them as the black fevers. Call this disease of the dysmaniasis. We can call them as black fevers. But after treatment, some patients will be having treatment uh, in on their face. They will having the nodular. Oh. They will having the nodulars. So for these types of disease, we call them as a post scalar agents. But some species of the dysmania, they were having the destroyed the mucocutaneous. So these types of patients, they will be died by for the other infection, by other infection. They are the dysmania. The next one and the last one, that is the scabies. The disease name is scabies. But the pathogen is the each mite. They are parasitizing in our skin. They are digging hole and they are laying eggs and also they are mating on our skin surface. So these patients, if they were infected, the infective side that is so itchy. So they are still scratching, scratching, and also can have the damage on their skins and can have the inflammation. And these types of patients, how they can transmit the disease? They are living on our skin, yes. So if the people, uh, human to human or human to animals, they are having the skin contact, direct contact, then the scabies, they can migrate 
to the other host and causing the disease as the scabby. That is for each mice, each mice. So in our life, there are a lot of these parasites can, uh, and they, they can cause these types of parasitic disease. So we have to learn for uh, medical parasitology. So in the WHO and the CDC, they just make a statistic for the parasitic disease. So for, from this figure, we can see that the first one, the round of the Ascarius lambdacus, annually, 807 to 12, 21 million of people was newly infected by the round wall. Newly infected by the round wall. And annually, 60,000 of people, they are died by for Ascarius. They are died by the Ascarius. And the webworm, its scientific name, we call them as Tricurious Tricura. They are living in our big bones. They are living in our big bones. And annually infected guys, they are having the 604 to 795 million people. And 10,000 of the patients, they will be died by for a webworm infection. And for a hook one, 567 to 780 million, uh, eight, uh, seven, uh, million people was infected. And uh, 65,000 people was died by for a Hookworm infection. But for these three ones, they are living in our intestine. Maybe in small intestines, some of them they are in the, our large intestine. But for both all of these diseases were transmitted, or we can be infected, touch with the soil. Touch with the soil. Maybe for the larvae, maybe for the eggs, they can cause infection to us. So these three types of disease, we can call them as a soil transmitted disease. Soil transmitted disease. The next one, the flare worms. In the world, 657 million people annually in, uh, newly infected. But 2,000 to 50,000 people will be die for the flareus. But die for the flareus. The parasitic in our leaf node. And from malaria, annually 229 million people was infected. The death rate is so high, yes. 409,000 people will be die for, for the malaria infection. So this is having the high mortality rate, high mortality rate. And the season of us, 40 million people was newly infected, but the death rate is a little bit high, yes? 20 million. But for this one and this one, you can think that the malaria, you can think of them as an acute one. But for this one, that is for a chronic one. Only the chronic stage or late stage. So means after infection, they are uh, several years later, they may be died. Over, uh, new, uh, it will be over 10 years or 10 years, they may be that. So the, infant, uh, the mortality rate, it looks like a little bit higher. But exactly, the malaria, its mortality rate is so high. Especially that is very uh, harmful to the pregnant women or the child. That is for a malaria. And also having the Antamoeba histolytica. Antamoeba histolytica. They are mainly parasitic in our large bones large birds, but the, uh, they said 35 to 50 million people was new annually infected. But exactly for the entanglement most of the people that are infected by these protozoa, they are asymptomatic. Only lower than 10% of the people having the clinical symptoms. So, that is not, not this uh, data is not so correct. So they said in the world, in the world population, maybe one percent to ten percent of us was infected by the Antamoeba histolytica, but they are asymptomatic. Only little number of people they are having the clinical symptoms, and the death one is the fifty-five thousand. And the next one is uh, uh, chlorokinesis sinensis. 
Its common name is liver fluke. Liver fluke. So the liver fluke, that is for a tumor product, one type of tumor product. But they are not parasitizing in the liver, but instead they are parasitizing in the bile duct. Bile duct. So they can cut obstruction of the bile duct. So the patient can having the inflammation. Also, they can having the cancer. Can having the cancer. So annually infected one that is 20 to 30 million one. So how we can be infected by the liver flu? That is, uh, we ingest raw or undercooked fresh water fish. Fresh water fish, not sea fish. So in that way, if they are having the larvae stages in the fish, then we can be called infected. They are living in our bile duct and can cause the inflammation. So the liver fluke, they also have several species. But in China, they are the species that is clonkinensis sinensis. So this uh, infective rate that is high, uh, commonly happen in the Guangdong, Guangxi, or Heilongjiang, like in these areas, like in these areas, because of their eat habit, yeah, because of their eat habit. So that is for a liver flu. And how many of people was died by for this parasite infection? There are no data. There are no data. The last one, that is Trypanosoma cruzis. Trypanosoma cruzis. This one, this pathogen, is mainly transmitted in the Latin America. Mainly transmitted in the Latin America. It was infected by some of the astrophore infect biting. That is for a kissing bug. Kissing bug. And from the biting site, they will have edema and they will make multiplication and going through the blood circulation. At last, the people will be die for enlargement of their liver, uh, heart, or enlargement of their bones. That is for the the Chagas disease. Annually, the diet people, that is for the 43,000. So from the infection to the diet, they may need for one year to three or four years, they will be done. That is for the Chagas disease. So we can see that in the world, they are also having a lot of a parasitic disease was happening, happening. So the WHO, they just make a statistics for a 10 major tropical parasitic disease, a 10 major tropic disease. That is for the malaria, histosomiasis, lymphatic filariasis, onchoceriasis, lysmaniasis, and African trypanosomiasis and American trypanosomiasis, dengue fever, leprosy, and tuberculosis. These 10 diseases, they are belonging to the 10 major trophic diseases. Among these 10 trophic diseases, how many of the disease is not belonging to the parasitic disease? Leprosy, tuberculosis, dengue, so, this two one you already learned in the last semester, yes? Yeah? Dengue fever, I think you already also learned in the last semester, yes? Yeah? The main pathogen is bacteria, virus, fungi, what? It's for bacteria, yes? Uh, it's for a virus. So their main pathogen is the virus. But for like the malaria, cytosomiasis. Lymphatic filariasis, onchoceriasis, lysmaniasis, sleeping sickness, Chagas disease. These seven diseases, the pathogen is the parasite. The pathogen is the parasite. So these seven diseases, among ten, they are belonging to the parasitic disease. But dengue fever, some of you said yes, some of you said no. If the, for the pathogen, that is belonging to a virus disease. But we also can include them as a parasitic disease because it was transmitted by the mosquitoes. 
it is belonging to the vector one disease. The mosquito that is for a medical arthropod. So in the 10 main uh, trophic disease, eight of them that is belonging to a parasitic disease. And all of us now in the trophic areas. So we have to learning for a parasite, yes? We have to learn for a parasite. So in this, uh, uh, unless for these 10 major trophic diseases, they are also having the new emerging parasitic disease. Neo emerging parasitic disease. That is a newly found parasitic disease or renamed parasite. They are belonging to the new emerging parasite. And the disease, we call them as new emerging parasitic disease. So some of the cryptococcus, they are belonging to the neural emerging parasite, neural emerging parasite. And another one that is for a re-emerging parasitic disease. That is a we are already well known for the parasite. And we can well conclude the parasite. But nowadays it is causing disease causing the disease reinfection to the human and now we are still have, uh, uh, having uh, suffering as a parasitic disease. So this type of parasite, we call them the re-emerging parasitic disease. So like the soil transmitted parasite, they are belonging to a re-emerging parasitic disease. The most famous one that is for the round wall, like the cocoa they are all belonging to a re-emerging parasitic disease. So, in the world, they are having another name for these re-emerging parasitic disease. We call them as the neglected trophic disease. Neglected trophic disease. So, for a neglected trophic disease, they are having this disease, like the Bruce Lee Arthur, Chagas disease, Cystisocosis, dengue fever, guinea worm disease, or echinococcosis, brassiopsis, or sleeping sickness, dysmaniasis, dengue, uh, uh, lymphatic disease, or leprosy, mycetomars, or coserosis, rabies, cystisomiasis, so soil transmitted one, and trichoma. And from here, we also can know most of them, that is for a parasitic disease, yes? So, Bruce Lee Arthur, the pathogen is belonging to which part? If we divide them as the virus, bacteria, fungi, and the parasite, this four group, then Bruce Lee Arthur, that is belonging to the which infection? Bacteria, mycobacteria and Chagas disease, parasite. This is a crisis, parasite. Dengue fever, guinea worm. Because they said this is a worm, yes? So this must be the parasite. Echinococcosis, parasite. Facialoasis, also can call them a liver hepatitis, yes? This is also been living in our liver, mainly happened in the ship. So this is parasitic disease. And sleeping sickness, parasite. This menaces, leprosy, bacteria, mycobacteria. Lymphatic filariasis, parasite, mycetoma, fungi, onchocerosis, parasite, rabies. Virus, yes, this is the myosis. This one, parasite, trachoma. Trachoma is a fungi. Reddish eye. Bacteria, four specialized bacteria. One of the four specialized bacteria. So. We can see that among these, among the neglected tropical disease, most of them, at least half or two-thirds, is belonging to the parasitic disease, yes? 
that is for a neglected tropical disease. So um, uh, if the disease, the disease was transmitted by for the food, in that way, we can call them as the foodborne parasitic disease or foodborne parasitosis. So means, according to our food, maybe for the vegetables, maybe for the meat, maybe for the water, they are including the some stage of the parasite. And we ingest and we have the disease. In that way, we call them as the foodborne parasitosis. Foodborne parasitosis. So, like the roundworms, they are belonging to the foodborne parasitosis. Liver fluke, that is also belonging to the foodborne parasitosis. And what is the parasitic genosis? Genosis means to animal, they can cause infection. But parasitic genosis means human and animal, they both can be infected by the same parasite. And they also both can have the parasitic disease. But in the main, uh, it is uh, commonly transmitted among the animals. But sometimes the disease can transmit it to the human and we can be sick. So these types of disease, we call them as the parasitic genosis. Parasitic genosis. So like the echinococcus, that is the belonging to the parasitic genosis. Parasitic genosis. That is for the some certain types of uh, parasitic disease. So, as a medical student, why we should learn for a parasitology? So, from these statistics, we can, we already found that there are a lot of uh, parasitic disease was uh, driving our health, uh, cause uh, damage to us, and having we are sleeping or suffering for a parasitic disease. So we should knowing for a parasite, and we should learning for a parasitology. That is for why we should learn it. Why we should learn it. So the, uh, review again. What is the medical parasitology? This is a uh, one subject that study for the parasite, study for their morphology, for their life cycle. Pathogenesis, diagnosis, epidemiology, and prevention. So these types of subjects, we call them as the medical parasitology. So in short term, we can see that the study and medical implications of a parasite that infects humans. This subject, we can call them as the medical parasitology. Medical parasitology. So the parasite is a live animals, the live animals, and they are living, uh, they acquire some of its basic nutrient re uh, requirements, and through its intimate contact with another living organism. So one living an organism was living on the another one, and uh, they are having benefit. The other one was harmful. So these types of live animals, we can call them as a parasite. So the parasite having the unicellular one, call them as a protozoa, multicellular one. That is the hermes and the astrophore. That is for the parasite. That is for a parasite. So if two living uh, live organisms, they are living together. They are living together. So this relationship we can call them as a symbiosis. Two different living organisms, they are living together. We can call them as a symbiosis. But during their living together, both of them, they are benefit. Both of them, they are benefit. In this way, we can call them as mutualism. Just like the hermit crab and the sea animals. So like this one, they can produce toxins, but for a crest, they can carry the uh, carry the animals and they can move. 
So both of them, they are having the beneficial. So in this way, we can call them as a materialism. But while they are living together, one was benefit. The other is no beneficial and there are no harmful. For this uh, relation, we can call them as a commensalism. We call them as a commensalism. So on the sharp surface, we can see that they are having short or uh, little fishes, yes. This uh, the shark, they can move in, in the broad areas to having the food. But the fishes, their swimming abilities is so poor. So if they want to live, uh, they, they want to uh, absorb or they, if they want to take more uh, food, then they have to attach on the shark surface and when they are swimming to the broad layer, layer and they can take a lot of the food. So they are having the beneficial. But for the shark, there are no beneficials and there is there are no harmful. So for them, we can call them as a commensalism. commensalism. But we should mainly make a focus for the last one, parasitism. Parasitism. Two uh, organisms living together, one is having the beneficial, the other one is harmful. So this way, this relationship, we call them as a parasitism. So parasitism. So the harmful one, we call them as a parasite. And the, uh, the harmful one, we call them as a host. The beneficial one, we call them as a parasite. We call them as a parasite. So using one figure, we can conclude these three different types of relationships. Both of them, they are smiling. They are a benefit. So this one was a materialism. One is smiling, the other one is... Yes, no harm, no benefit. So this one, we can call them as a commensalism. One is smiling, the other is crying, then we can call them as a parasitism. Parasitism. So this one, that is what we have to mainly take focus. We have to mainly take focus. So during the para, uh, this uh, parasitism, the, the benefit to one, the parasite, they are also having their lifespan. They are having their lifespan. They need uh, some certain environment and they are having some certain stages and they need some certain of a reproduction, um, uh, reproduction ways and some certain nutrients. So for this one, we call it as the life cycle, the parasite life cycle. So the, para, the life cycle, its term is the whole life or a complete generation of a parasite. We call them as the life cycle. Life cycle. So in the, uh, in, uh, from the next week, we will learning the each parasite. So while you are learning for a parasite, first of all, you must know the, their life cycle. You must know their life cycle. So during the life cycle, some of the worms or some of the parasites, they only need one host. Then they can finish their life cycles. So these types of life cycle, we call them as the direct life cycle. Direct life cycle. But some of the parasites during their lifespan, they should change at least two of the different hosts or at least two of the different organisms and cause the harm to them. So these types of life cycles, we can call them as the indirect life cycle. Indirect life cycle. So if the parasite is belonging to the hermes, then the direct life cycle the hermes, we can call them as geohermes. Geohermes. If that is belonging to the indirect life cycle, then we can call them as the biohermes, biohermes. So the direct life cycle one, they are only have one host. The host 
we can call them as the definitive host or the final host. If they are having the another uh, one more uh, host, then the middle one, we call them as intermediate host, intermediate host. So this is the life cycle. So if a parasite successfully infect humans and they cause the disease, then we call them as the infection. We call them as the, we call them as an infection. If they are living on our surface or just touch or having the uh, very short term infection, then we can call them as infestation. Infestation. A little bit different. A little bit different. But anyway, if the parasite was in the cause of the human disease, then we call them as the parasitosis. Parasitosis. But during their life cycles, not all of the stage can cause infection to the human. Only some certain stage can cause infection to the human. So we should know which stage can cause infection to us. That is the infective stage. Infective stage. So while we are learning or while we are observing or look at the life cycle, you should find out what is their infective stage. What is the infective stage? And how we are infected. From which way the parasite came in our body. So the way, the, uh, from the root, one is we call them as infective root. The other one is we can call them as infective way. So the root and the way is a little bit similar, but the difference that is just like if I eat the vegetable and I got infection, then the vegetable is came through uh, through my orals and they are arriving my small intestine. Yes. So the per oral that is the infective root, but the infective way that is detailed one. The, that means I eat the vegetable. That is the infective way. So per oral is the infective root. So in the life cycle, you should pay attention. They are having the, what is the infective stage? How we are infected? So the infective root and the infective way, you should find out and you should remember it. That is for the life cycle, life cycle. So the two organisms, they are living together. The smiling one that is a, Parasite, the crying one that is for a host. The parasite, they are having the several set of, of the classification. So the first set, that is the obligatory parasite and the facultative parasite. This is a one type of classification method. The other type, that is endoparasite and ectoparasite. And if they are cause disease to the immune comprehensive one, then we can call them as an opportunistic parasite. Opportunistic parasite. And for a host, they are having these four types of different hosts. One is definitive host. Also, we can call them as the final host. Final host. The second one is intermediate host. And they are also having the reservoir host and the parentic host. Also can call them a transport host. So what this parasite they are meaning? What this host they are meaning? We should look at for their terms. First, for a parasite. First, that is obligate parasite. Obligate parasite. The obligate parasite, just like the bacteria. If they living, they must living in the host and can finish their life cycle. Otherwise, the life cycle, it can be continued. It will be stopped. So these types of parasites, we call them as the obligate parasite. So they must be parasitizing in the other organisms, then finish their life cycle. This is type of parasite, we call them as obligate parasite. Most of the parasites that we are learning, they are belonging to the obligate parasite. Then instead, 
if they can live in the other organism. Also, maybe they are free living in the environment. In both these two cases, they can finish their life cycle. They can finish their life cycle. Then we can call them as fertile parasites. If they are living in the organism, then they are having another life cycle. If they are living by themselves, they still can finish their life cycle. From the egg, larvae, adult, they can still go in on. So this type of parasite, we call them as fercative parasite. So the most typical one that is strongyolysis is secolysis. So for this one, we will be learning in the third way. We'll be learning in the third way. So the other set of parasites, one is endoparasite, the other one is ectoparasite. That is a very simple one, yes? Living inside of our body, call them as the endoparasite. On the surface, or just have a short-term contact, then we can call them as ectoparasite. So arthropods, most of the arthropods, they are belonging to the endoparasite. But for the protozoa, hermes, most of them, they are belonging to the endoparasite. That is for the endo and the ectoparasite. And the last parasite, that is for the opportunistic parasite, yes? For the healthy guys, though they are infected, but they are not multiplicating, they are not causing the disease. Only they tend as immune comprehensive stages. Then they are multiplicating speed, uh, 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 fast, and can cause the disease. So for these ones, we call them as opportunistic parasites. Opportunistic parasites. The most typical one, that is Toxoplasma gonides. Toxoplasma gonides. That is uh, infected from the domestic cat. Infected from the domestic cat. So while you are wanna grow in the cat, you should pay attention for your cat's health. Otherwise, you will be infected. That is for the opportunistic parasite. And also, you can call them as an extension parasite, or permanent parasite, or temporary parasite. Using this name, you can classify the parasite. And the main term, that is for the host, host that Two organisms was living together, the crying one was the host, yes? So the exact term of the host, that is an organism which favors the parasite and provides the nourishment and the shelter. So this one, this organism, we call them as host. We call them as host. But if the adult of parasite or during their uh, sexually reproduction stage, they are, they are parasitic. Then these types of hosts, we call them as definitive hosts. Also can call them as a final host. So you should know the definitive host means in the definitive host, you can find out the adult parasite. The adult parasite. Or they are having the sexual reproduction, uh, sexual reproduction stages. So this type, we call them as a definitive host. Instead, if the larvae stage was parasitizing or the asexual stage was parasitizing, then we call them as the intermediate host. Intermediate host. So the larvae stage or the asexual stage was in fact, uh, parasitizing one then intermediate host. The adult or sexual stage was parasite. Then we can call them as the definitive host. Definitive host. So in the intermediate host, the larvae was parasite or a sexual stage was parasite. Now they are having the sexual reproduction or the larvae will develop as the next stage. They can have in the development. Otherwise, we can't call them as an intermediate host. They must have the development, or they must have the morphology changement. Then we can call them as the intermediate host. Have break, then we are going on for the next content.
reserve your host and the parentonic host. So we only having some of these terms you should master in this class. Only for several terms, yes? A break.
going for our class. So for a definitive host, that is for an adult worm or the sexual stage parasitizing host, then we are called them as the definitive host. But if the larvae or the sexual stage parasitizing host, then we call them as the intermediate host. Intermediate host. Then the problem. The problem. That is for a reservier host. Reservier host. So the term of a reservier host, that is for a host serving as a source of infection for others. Source of infection for others. In this way, they mean the, the others may be for a human, may be for an animal. So the source, that is this host, is mainly meaning the animal, mainly meaning for the animal. So because we are having the synesis, yes? So the human and animal, they both can having the same parasite infection. And all, uh, both of them, uh, the adult worm can be parasitic. But if the animal is the definitive host, then they can pass out the ants or the larvae stages from the next their life cycle. Maybe can cause infection to the human, and we can be called infection. So in this way, the animal host, we call them as the reservoir host. Reserve your host. And the humans, we call them as a definitive host. So the animals, you can call them as a reserve your host or the definitive host anyway. But the point, that is the, for all of them, the, in the animals must be the, having the adult worms or the sexual reproduction stage parasitizing one. These animals, we can call them as a reserve your host or definitive host. But humans will only call them as the definitive host. Definitive host. So in the definitive host, intermediate host and the reserve host, they can be my uh they can be replicate or they are having the reproduction. They are having the changement in these host. In these host. But some of the parasite larvae they got infection to some organism, to some organism. It may be humans, it may be the animals, but in this host, in this organism, they can't go to development. Also, they can't change their morphology. They can't go to replication. So that is belonging to the unsuitable host, unsuitable host. But this previous three one, they can go to changement or they can go to the replication. So they are belonging to a suitable host. So these types of unsuitable host, we call them as the parentonic host or call them as the transport host. Transport host. So there are no changement. So it, uh, as an example, if this parentonic host was infected by 10 larvae, then the 10 larvae are still living as the 10 larvae in this host. The number is not changed. And maybe the size will be different, but the morphology and the stage is unchanged. So these types of hosts, we call them as the parentonic host or transport host. So in the life cycle, unless you should know the infective stage, infective rules or infective rules, Wait, you also need to know what is the definitive host, what is the intermediate host, if they have or not, if they have a reserve host or not, if they are having a transport host or not, and if they are having what other host, what, which organism it will be. That is while you are learning the parapsychology, what you have to pay attention to. Yes, that is for a Types of a host and the types of a parasite. Then, examples. 